Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and uh, very well done if you got an answer in to Fistamafel's incredible Sudoku hunt, uh, the hybrid Sudoku hunt. It was fantastic. Uh, we had so many correct entries on my, and we were amazed by that. Um, it was a very hard hunt, and yet lots of people got to the very end, and... Uh, we're very impressed. Well done. Thank you. Um, for Thank you for taking part. Thank you for being a Patreon. Um, there is still plenty of time to enter Jay Dyer's fantastic Sudoku hunt as well. It's a um, numeric alchemy. It's all about modifier cells. It is absolutely brilliant. It just makes you think really hard and it's great fun. Uh, that's available till the 20th. So, uh, or I mean, it's it's available to Patreons for longer than that, but you can enter the competition until the 20th. Uh, there's a, a five puzzle competition for a prize and a, a 15, if you get through all 15 puzzles and get the right answer phrase, then uh, you will get your name read out by Simon at some point, but there's a backlog. Anyway, um, those are all on Patreon. Do check out our apps as well. So many apps. We were just hearing about people working their way through both the 500k app and the Domino Sudoku app today, brilliant. Congratulations if you can get through them as well. They are more approachable. Now this puzzle that I'm going to do today is definitely approachable. Um, so much so that the testers removed a couple of clues that weren't really necessary that Half Flam had put in. They say it's approachable enough as it is. So do consider giving this one a go. Uh, maybe as your introduction to German whispers or primes, I don't know. Anyway, the rules are relatively straightforward. So we've got normal Sudoku rules, which is one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Um, digits on green lines, these are German whisper lines. They have a difference of at least five with their neighbors. So you could put one and six in these cells or one and eight, but not three and seven, because the difference is too small. It's not five. Uh, gray cells in the grid contain a prime, a prime number. So one is by definition not prime. The rules remind us of that. We do occasionally get people saying surely one's a prime. Uh, mathematicians say it is not. Two, three, five, and seven are the Sudoku prime numbers. Cells with a black dot have a one to two ratio. So um, those could be, I don't know, one and two, two and four, three and six, or four and eight. Those are the combos. Um, all black dots are given, so there is a negative constraint on black dots as well. So do give this a go. As I say, definitely approachable. Um, I am going to just see how we get on with it. So let's start the clock and let's get cracking. Okay, so... So the grey cells are 2, 3, 5, and 7, and we, I think we, we're given them all, aren't we? There's four in every box. Um, okay, this might be a bit of an odd place to start thinking about this, but I'm looking at this green German whisper line and where it goes down column 3. And the things I know about green German whisper lines are, one, they can never have a 5 on, so you don't put a five on a German whisper line because its neighbor couldn't be another Sudoku digit. It would be within it'd be four or less as a difference. Um, and then secondly, the numbers alternate high and low, high and low. And I mean by that higher than five, lower than five to maintain this difference. So only seven is a high number in, in the grey cells. So these two, which must have the same polarity, they must both be high or both be low. Well, they obviously can't both be seven. So they must be low. This must be high and must be seven, I reckon. So that's the seven. These are low and they're, they're primes. So they're two and three. So the other prime in the column is a five. Oh, of course, five and seven can never be on black dots. So down here in box seven, these must be two and three. Seven can never be on a black dot because it has a one to two relationship. And uh, 
that would put seven with 14 or three and a half, which are not Sudoku digits. So seven goes there in box four, five is there, and you can see how this is kind of unfolding. Um, there's a type of Sudoku sometimes called trio Sudoku, where you look at ones, twos, and threes in one color, fours, fives, and sixes in another, and seven, eight, nines in a third. And I find those quite easy, especially if you divide them up into the types, uh, because you can kind of do them as three separate puzzles. This one, I wonder if you can do it as two separate puzzles. Yes, look, in this row, which gray cell has a five on it? Obviously not those two, and it can't be on a black dot, so that's the five. In this box, seven must be there, because it doesn't get a black dot ever. This must, where does five go in this box? Must be here. Um, ah, and of course, seven is on this green line. Those two can't both be sevens alternating. So seven is here. And actually that is, I've forgotten, that is telling us all about highs and lows um, all along the line. So seven can only ever be neighbors on a German whisper line with one or two. Well, that is not, well, it's a white cell, so it's not two. So one there, two there. This one has two there, one on the other side. Doesn't, I mean, it could be a two, but it's white, so it can't. That's on a black dot. So we're getting, we're getting a lot done here. Uh, let's do as many gray cells as I can for now. The little gray cells being very helpful today. Five and seven here, but we've got a five across the grid. So that's a three. I might come back to that on the German Whisper in a moment. This is a two, three pair, and this is a five, seven pair in row one. That's a three. This is a seven, because the other three primes have been used up here. We can't put five on the black dot here, so five goes there. Maybe I can't, f yes, actually this sees two and three vertically and five horizontally, that's a seven. This is two or three. This is a five, the last one in the column. This is two or three as well. So, sort of, oh no, hang on, seven's looking out there. I ran out of a bit of steam. I've got a few gray cells left to determine by reference to the black dots, presumably. Uh, now, ah, there's a, right, the, the five, I was going to call them the five composite digits, composite being the opposite of prime, but I suppose one is neither composite nor prime. So one and the four composite digits are one, four, six, eight, nine. Which two of those can ever be joined together by a black dot? And the answer is only four and eight. So any two white cells in this puzzle joined by a black dot are four and eight, I think. I think that's got to be right. And over here, we know which one connects to the two. It's the four. That makes the whisper work. Oh, talking of the whisper here, the whisper won't work with a four, so it's an eight. And using the whisper, we know this is low because that's low, this is high, that's low. So in fact, four must be next to nine if it's on a whisper. Got a one six pair there to go with the two three. We get a four nine pair up here, six and eight can be written in, and that works. This whole whisper seems to work fine. That is now a six, and there's a one nine pair left in column one. This is a four six nine triple, but nine can never go on a black dot. So, oh well, obviously six goes next to three on the black dot. This is a one or a four about this? Oh, it's not an eight. So this, to be next to a three on a whisper, that must be a nine. That's a six. That's a one. That's a six. We can, um, we're just finishing off here virtually. One, that is four or eight. This can't be, oh, it's not four or eight, because we've got a four in the box. This is a one, so that connects to a two. That's going to resolve all our remaining gray cells. That's going to let us choose which of six and one are on the black dots. That must be a six. Oh, this is another four, eight pair. We know which way round it is through a variety of means. Um, 
This is one and nine, but remember the German whisper, so nine goes on the line. Um, six must be here now. Oh, in fact, we can do six for one. That's a one nine pair, giving us a potential deadly pattern. We'll look at that in a moment. This is eight for the whisper and six there. Oh, and I've done something wrong now. Because that eight is clashing with that eight. That's not good, is it? How have I gone wrong in this very straightforward puzzle? I want to say that that's a 4-9 pair. What's going on here? 4-6-9. Did I get these the wrong way around? No. The black dot... Wow. Well. Oh, what, what's gone on here, Mark? Something very bad has happened on this puzzle. Um, oh, it's just here, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Three. Why did I think that had to be eight? Because I was seeing a green line between those cells. And instead, there's a black dot between those cells. So that's six. That's eight. I was right with eight and one. Now I've got two deadly patterns. But this one... Yes, look, remember, all black dots are given. We haven't used that yet. We're using it now because this cell is next to a 2. So if that was a 1, there'd be a black dot between them. And that fixes this one. And I wonder if we've got the same... Yes, we have. Look, with a 2 again, but looking the other way at a 4, potentially. But if that was a 4, there'd be a black dot between those cells. So we can definitely know that's a 9, that's a 4. And that has been a very approachable puzzle. Um, I hope you did have a go at that. It doesn't take a lot of deep understanding. It just takes a bit of experience, maybe, or just thinking through what the rules mean. And uh, it is straightforward. So thank you very much to Haflam for sending it. And uh, thank you for watching us on the channel. As always, nice quick video today. Gives you some time back in your evening. And... Uh, <laughs> If you want another video, we've got a huge archive of puzzles. Have a look at our catalogue. But as it is, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.